Yeah, I'm recording the screen. People are coming. Yeah. Great. Um, I totally understand because I have the other workshop in Korean Brazil, right? So um, I listen some voice from them, including you guys. I mean, as I said, the learning code takes time, basically. Oh, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's almost yeah. impossible, like learning, you know, um, one or I mean, one language during the six day or five day workshop. This is, I think, is impossible. But again, um, I'm trying to share my experience and knowledge based on the, some level of the engineering in terms of the computational design stuff. So maybe, you know, uh, I'm not a, like a best guy in this area. So probably I, make some, I made some mistake or I have some you know, wrong idea, probably. So, but at least we have some map, right? That we can trace. So maybe uh, my workshop become like possibly a sort of a helper to develop you guys like um, you know, professional trajectory in terms of a computation design with the data. So um, again, as I said, we ha I have all my YouTube channel. So there's a always, you know, I'm, you know, I upload my video on YouTube. So whenever you need just access, and then um, on my um, uh, Medium channel, there's uh, the, the, the index. So if you, if you have any question after this workshop about you know, my material, please let me know. I'm happy to discuss and improve my material by myself, you know, because I'm also keep learning with, uh, in, by reacting with other people in our area. So yeah, uh, let's get started. So I'm going to share my screen. And then, most importantly, I think I can open my chat in here. Yeah, I'm getting used to using the uh, um, Zoom. Okay, so today I am going to talk a little bit about computation and geometry and geometry class, particularly using TypeScript and visualization things. So. Um, as we did, you know, uh, we have three um, sort of research overview that I have been done before. And then little, little, you know, idea about the geometry or class things in TypeScript. And then we have a bunch of workshops as we did. Yeah, so we need to create the, some mathematic geometry object today. And then try to visualize this object in a Canvas API. Okay. And as an additional uh, note, I am um, digging my GitHub a little bit, and then I, 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 I found some of my um, class which is open to public. So I'm just trying to share um, the vector class and line and polyline. I think that there are different types of versions like C Sharp, Python, JavaScript, and Java, I guess. But um, on, you know, on the internet, there's a lot of good material describing vector or some you know, geometric, analytic geometric things. So I would like to recommend like a search and Google it. I think that as I said, like as a computational designer or software engineer for graphics, most important are abilities to find the, the, the information that you are looking for. As I said, you know, as a developer, I'm always facing the problem. I need to debug them correctly. So I think this is important uh, thing rather than, uh, you know, just knowing some component or some API things. So great. Um, yeah, the first uh, project is, uh, I already talked about these uh, uh, projects on my um, the lecture series, the first video, but we can simply revisit again here. So this is the project I did um, in, the, in the Flux. Um, so um, yeah, we, we uh, there's many people to in, uh, engage in this project. So most of my, my job is to develop some like an algorithm to fit the parking lot in arbitrary boundary site in the Singapore. So the input, that, I mean, our client is a like developer. They are really interested in, they have no idea about the design, but they're really interested in packing, you know, um, uh, the parking lot in the particular the boundary site. So we develop um, some algorithm uh, I did like 2016 there, but these days many people, you know, um, use uh, uh, shows similar like optimization things for their building or parking lot and things like that. 
And particularly in the Singapore, they have uh, their own, um, I can't remember, but they have a, some, some precast like a modularized system. So uh, uh, based on this modularized system, we need to um, find like optimal, uh, best, you know, the parking knob, um, like a configurator um, uh, on the side. And on the other hand, also I open some parameters so that designer can see some, uh, some level of the optimization. So for example, I want to see like, you know, uh, the, the, the most the best um, um, options uh, in that particular site. So I visualizing some the combination of the parameter here, for example. So um, you, we can actually uh, create the, our own sort of filter system um, so that we just visualizing um, based on the selection um, from the user or developer. So, I mean, there's a lot of, a, a lot of possibility um, in terms of the computation design with the you know, optimization things. So, I mean, all possibilities here. It's, it's actually it's, it's all about the, uh, you know, the geometry optimization that we're gonna learn today. And then this is the second research I did. Uh, um, this is um, it's more about like um, optimization problem. So we have two different types of rule. One rule is we have a column to support our ceiling. And the ceilings actually need to follow, I mean, found that, that the best place to support the ceiling. Right? At, at the same time, we have a particle representing people. They, they're trying to push the column and then the column is trying to looking for the place to support. Ceiling. So as you can see, we have a multiple trial, like a iterative tri a trial to find the like, best the configuration in terms of the location of the column. Also, we have um, some other, let's say, um, limitation or like a, um, um, some rule that we need to follow, for example. So there's some different circumstances, so such as we have a fixed situation, we have a void, uh, the void space and uh, solid space that people cannot penetrate. So this is very fun because we basically, you know, uh, create the environment and then see how the computer, uh, the, the algorithm found the best options. You know, you know what? The previously the parking lot is there will be one best option, but in this case we have a multiple option. So I think the computation design or like you know the, the optimization give us a way to you know find like a more possibility within some, some confinement, correct? So let me jump. Um, this is my thesis, uh, Harvard GSD. Um, at that time, I'm very. Um, I mean, my thesis is more about like a prediction and training 3D geometry. There's a two part. One part is more about like how we um, you know, train a machine or network for the 3D, 3D geometry things. So there's a multiple way. I mean, even these days, there's a more like a brilliant way, but at the time, what I did is like a voxelized uh, uh, and then using the pix to pix uh, fit, uh, the network, which is a little bit you know, famous right now. Uh, I mean, the famous. <laughs> so we basically train the data and then get the like a uh, you know the result out of the the, the, the training, and then the sec as a second step uh, we try to um, sort of reconstruct the the, the 3D geometry out of the prediction, and I mean this is a very like a uh, let's say um, the, the common uh, uh, the machine learning and process I guess, but at the end of uh, the process I'm trying to think about like how I you know ask a machine as a um, a worker as a creative, I don't know, some output. So what I did is uh, at the time is I felt like the possibly error become creative for the machine. So I'm trying to make up uh, as much as, uh, um, uh, I'm trying to, trying to make an error as, as much as possible in order to get the what is the best error, you know, that you can consider this is a creative way, right? So, um, in order to do this, there's a multiple way, um, but one thing I can tell you is uh, we have um, some linking system. So we have a, basically you just can draw their own some sketch of the 3D geometry, and then you know, the network gave us like some linking, yeah? So we try to bind them 
um, like a brain dam and then create the new types of the geometry, which is sometimes weird, which is sometimes very brilliant because um, that's something we never thought, of, thought about it before. Yeah. So as I said, I, in this context, I try to understand the, what is the, you know, the creativeness in the, in the machine learning. And then I assume that possibly, you know, error could be considered as a, the creativeness. Again, not error, error, but like a brilliant error or like you know, error something uh, by chance. Yeah. I don't know, this is just my thought. I'm keep thinking right now, I'm keep learning new methodology and I'm very, you know, um, um, big fan to learn you know, new technology things. So if you guys have a better idea, uh, we can talk uh, in the different you know, discussion. So now uh, we are, as I said, going to uh, learn the class things, okay? So before learn class, so I have a one link for you guys. So we are basically learning programming right now, right? So programming, I'm not a computer science. My major uh, was architectural design, but I'm very interested in learning new things. So um, as far as I know, program paradigm is a, like, a, there's a lot of different types of program paradigms. So for example, like a, you know, functional programming. So we learned how to create the uh, definition in Python, right? So if you create the multiple function and then, you know, could be a function, we, we can think about this as a sort of, let's say, um, functional programming paradigm, uh, yeah? And also we have here procedural uh, paradigm and mathematical paradigm and logical things. But now we are trying to learn something about object-oriented programming paradigm things, okay? So here, um, there's a, uh, a page which is talks about class in TypeScript because we're gonna, we are learning TypeScript right now. But again, once you're familiar with the creating uh, the class in one language, it's really easy to expand in your knowledge of Python or Java or C Sharp. It's just, just, just a matter of time, just very easy. But most important thing is that understanding the concept, okay, that I'm going to talk about today. So um, this is a, there is a lot of, uh, I mean, this is a really deep sort of um, area in terms of the class programming things. So um, if you guys, I mean, tomorrow we're gonna make a more in-depth uh, knowledge, uh, in-depth learning in the class. So today we, I mean, we have a different perspective learning the class. So we have a one perspective, which is like a, for the beginner today. And the tomorrow we have like a more depth um, learning for the class. So if you are interested in it, just please read this article because there's a lot of like a good um, material, like an official class things in TypeScript here. And now we are reached the geometry class as a data structure. So these um, uh, workshops, we are going to build uh, build mathematic geometric object. And then using this object, we're gonna visualize um, the mathematic object uh, using Canvas API, okay? So here, um, I guess most of you guys are like a designer, right? So um, designer is not that, you know, um, closest to the math. But you know, uh, we are dealing with the geometry or shape. So actually, when you decompose the shape, the most important data uh, is a uh, uh, is a vector. Yeah. So actually, using vector, you can describe wha whatever you want. I mean, curve, surface, mesh. You can describe this one, um, uh, these kind of shapes by vector. Okay. So vector is a sort of a, you know mathematical object representing sometimes like a direction or magnitude or velocity where we have like more uh, um, multi-dimensional vector, yeah, more than three. So there's uh, some you know, useful article, uh, like uh, how to subtract and you know, calculating angle vector. There's a lot of, uh, as I said, uh, good material on the website. So just Google it and then find one of the material that you just want to read, yeah. So this is just basic you know, uh, definition of a vector. And here, if you click it, it brings us to um, CodePen, you know, site, which is our friend, yeah. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it's hard. Um, okay, so I create a array or list, 
it depends on people how 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 we call it, but we, we can we can call it RA, okay? So I assign zero zero zero, so I just print it. So we basically um, contain three different value in a array, right? So this is vector actually, yeah. So we can put more information here, yeah. This is also vector, yeah. But now uh, we are, you know, trying to learn the class things. So we have a better representation, better way to encapsulate the information and behavior as an object. Okay. So I mean, in this case, the uh, the this is just a simple array, right? So if I if I if I execute this line, and the post is is an array, so it has a, some particular inbuilt function that we already know, like a length, right? For example. So, but now we are trying to create the, our own sort of 100% customized class. Yeah. So this is the example here. So actually, before I talk about the uh, the uh, you know, before you decompose the in, an individual line of this class. So I, I will give you more like a high level abstract um, idea of the class, okay? So for example, um, um, okay, um, we are human being, right? We are, we are creature, we are living being, right? Yeah, there is actually, there is no living being. The living being were like a human sort of a concept, yeah? There's no human. But there is an NJ. NJ is a sort of an implementation of a human. Human is just like a sort of an abstract concept, right? So we basically need to think about some object or some behavior in this way, okay? So just focusing on the human, for example. So we have a human. So from the human, I'm, I'm gonna make a object called NJ, right? So I'm NJ, yeah, I'm become object. So what I did is, uh, this is a sort of a, the concept, like a human being, and then I create the, its own object. In this case, the list object, okay? So I create a, a vector class, like a concept, and then I in, uh, implement, like make an instance out of this class, okay? So now I'm a human being, right? I have a two different um, sort of um, parameters, like, yeah? One is uh, some of information, like, like information, yeah? Like a name, address, and height, weight. This is sort of information and data that belongs to me, NJ, correct, right? And the other way around is we are, I, I can walk, I can eat, yeah? I can learn, yeah? This is sort of a behavior, right? So with two angles of um, the, the class, we can describe ma many things, to be honest. So for example, I have a car. I'm going to make a car object, right? So maybe we need a, like a, um, some parameter for the car, like a how much is it, for example. And uh, what else, um, like a, the brand name. Yeah, this is the information, right? And then also we need, we, need, we need to make a functions like a long break, open the like a trunk or open the, the, the turn on the light. Yeah, things like that. This is, talks about behavior, right? Correct. So we have a vector here, right? So what kind of information vector could have, right? It's very obvious, right? The vector is we use vector as a representing something in special, right? In special, uh, the, uh, in special information or special context. So there should be three numbers, yeah? Because we are using the Cartesian coordinates. So we, using three numbers, we can describe something in, the, in this coordinate system for X and Y and Z, right? So um, I declare the class name with the, this sort of designate um, uh, inbuilt function. And then just forget about the static for now. I'm going to comment out. And then it has variable, yeah? X, Y, Z, yeah? And then we use TypeScript, so we need to define the types of a variable. Yeah, so I just put a number, number, number. Maybe we can do this. So basically what I did is I give it the default value. Yeah. Um, and then actually we don't need to this one. Yeah. This is the most minimum 
code to create the vector here. Yeah. So we declare the names of the class. Yeah. And then I open uh, the, the curly brace and then close the curly brace. Yeah. Just close the curly brace. Yeah. And then I can put some parameter that I want to append to the class. So for example, like a weight or height or name or address or NJ, for example. And then this is the constructor. It's sort of a syntax we need to follow. So but inside of the constructor, uh, there are, uh, there's an opportunity to give us some parameter. It's like a requirement parameter. So in order to create this, uh, this um, vector, we must inject this information to that class to, to create instance from that class, correct? And then we have the other, uh, we have a three different function which define each behavior of class. In this case, the vector, yeah? So, um, as I said, we need three parameters here to create the instance, yeah? To create the object out of this class. So we define the class and then in the constructor, now we know constructor is sort of the initial entry point to in a trigger to create this instance from this class. So X, Y, Z, three different value, and Z has a different value, meaning that the, the, the Z value sort of become optional, right? So I put like 10, 2.25, and one for each parameter, right? Yeah. And then also you can see here, I um, create the, uh, de declare the back A here, and then I using the dot notation. Yeah, that we are already familiar with, like a blah, blah, dot length, or dot to, to upper string, or lowercase of uppercase. Yeah, remember that, right? So now we know, oh, we can create our own sort of customized function here. So this is a sort of, a, um, we actually learn something behind the scene, yeah. Meaning that we have a more opportunity to create our own um, design system or you know, um, some class that we can control 100%, right? So, but the, the other interesting thing we need to understand is this, this. Yeah, in the Python, we use a self. Self. I think so. Yeah, self. Self is the same as the this in the TypeScript. So what it does is basically this indicate the class itself, right? So that um, this X means it point this X, right? And this X obviously because we have a curly brace here, open and close. So we know this is one scope that can I execute by um, executing this line, right? So this is sort of a scope. This scope, if you execute this one, we execute this uh, scope. Basically curly brace define the area that we need to execute in that like uh, the execution of the function, correct? So uh, in this case, you know, if you do this, like this, it probably if they try to override something, yeah. So we must type like this context here. I'm just trying to remember the Java was C sharp. You don't need to do that, but um, I'm recommending you guys to make a more explicit code, as I said, yeah, because it's easy, easy to debug and then easy to uh, maintain your more robust code system. Okay, so. Um, let me describe this code again. So I put the class, which is designated keyword to declare class, yeah? So the class is not actual object. We just define some template, yeah? Throughout the template, we create the actual object. Let's say an instance of this object, yeah? So we, uh, this is the name of the class, yeah? And then it always bring uh, the constructor, this is mandatory. Otherwise the code is gonna break because this is a syntax, yeah? So we have X and Y and Z. We need to define the type because this is TypeScript. In the JavaScript, you can actually 
execute very similar syntax, yeah. But you don't need to mention the type, which is actually sometimes good because mm, rules rule. But you know, as I said, the strict rule is always great, always best for the program or computational designer as time goes by because it prevent prevent from you know mistake and bugs. Yeah. So here, two string here. Oh, I'm sorry. So so throughout the constructor, we basically um, create the object with this designate value that I pass when I create this class. Yeah. So the most important thing is that there's a new keyword. New keyword. It, it, the code is gonna break without the new keyword, but we need to put the new. So in this case, in this case, computer understand. Oh, they're trying to make an instance from the class. Yeah. So this is, has something to do with the memory assign on the low level. Um, anyhow, um, so I create the um, a um, let's say class. Uh, uh, what is this? <laughs> My vector object. Yeah. And then I try to trigger call the function, which is called to string. Yeah, as name stands for, we can predict what it does, right? So uh, we can uh, actually see the, the code here, right? So there's no input value, yeah, because so, so that we don't need to put any information when you execute this, the, the, the function here. However, there's a return value here, so we call this function is return something, yeah. So there's two, two different types of function. One is the return void, which is nothing, yeah. Otherwise, it returns something, yeah. So, for example, let me do something like to uh, just st, yeah, and then I'm going to copy this code. Once I execute this line, can you can you? predict what kind of information gonna live inside of this SR variable? Actually, there's nothing, yeah? Because there's no return value, simply. So, anyhow. Um, so, the, in the return value, they basically return a string, which has their own x value, this y, this z, yeah, okay. And also, we have a two JSON. Yeah, this function we already know, already learned, right? Previously, so two JSON, we can expect, we can basically convert this object as a string. Yeah. So here, this is the the, the return value of this uh, this this execution. Yeah. And because this is a string, so that we are able to see this string like like this, right? However, if you put the, if you execute trigger, you know, the two JSON function, so we are able to get the, this kind of object. Yeah. There are huge difference, right? Now you guys know, right? There's the huge, absolutely different things. So now I'm going to create the other vector here, which is, has a little bit different number, right? Three minus two along the y axis and five along the z axis, right? So we have two vectors. And then, uh, I just, you know, um, put the name, you know, the name of class, yeah, and then using, I'm also using the done notation, yeah. So there's two different, uh, let's say, um, execution, yeah, or functions, and function things, I guess. One is the instance function, the other one is a static function. Whenever you create your instance out of class, the instance function is always belongs to that particular object. Yeah. So for example, I'm going to create a multiple NJ, 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 NJ. They have their own sort of the weight or height, right? If I execute it function, I'm trying to eat something and then the it function increases my weight, right? This weight is always affects this particular NJ, correct? Because they have their own particular like a value. Yeah. We call this a static information, I'm sorry, instance information, right? On the other hand, we have here static, yeah? Static is a sort of single, two sort of source. Just like a one thing, one single, like a, 
um, um, function. Yeah. So on the memory wise, actually, you know, the static function is a better use, right? Because for example, if I create a thousand of thousand of point, meaning that this function also occupy memory somehow thousand of thousand of number of the the the, the, the functions. Yeah, this is like a very bad sort of uh, usage of the memory, right? So in this case, however, so we use the static keyword, meaning that it belongs directly to, uh, um, uh, belongs to that class. So that's why I put this name directly here. There's no new keyword because we are not interested in creating an uh, object out of this class because there's no new keyword. We simply want to use this class. If you guys are just familiar with the C-sharp in, in Python, no, no, let's say the grasshopper or Python grasshopper things, there's a lot of static or instance uh, functions that they already built because the, the reason I'm saying is because I'm probably, you guys more familiar with the grasshopper environment, right? So I'm trying to take advantage of what we already familiar with. So just open the grasshopper and then click the C-sharp and then maybe you can put the line of dot geometry dot you can see point, yeah? This is sort of like class. We call it namespace, yeah? So need, you need to put like a new keyword in order to create a point out of this class. At the same time, you can put the namespace and then you can just put the dot notation in order to use the static function just like this. Just like this, right? So this is static function need a two, to this type is the same type, right? So you don't need to make the same type, but I'm just trying to describe what it does. So we try to, the input value is two vectors in order to return the distance between two points. Correct. So I uh, put the, the name of a class and then using the dot notation, I'm directly, directly access the static function. Yeah. And then I put the vector A here and then back to V, B, and then we are able to get the distance out of this function, right? I mean, you don't need to worry about to, to digest the entire things, yeah. So even for me, uh, I mean, it, take, it takes time, I, I mean, yeah. So I'm just trying to describe and, you know, um, don't be stressed out. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to say, actually, yeah. So anyhow, now we have two sort of vector, and then we create, Create, uh, we, we get the distance between two vectors. The distance is like this, yeah? And then the distance is, uh, you know, this is just something like, um, there's a lot of uh, information, yeah. I mean, I'm always search information, imp uh, always search um, internet for my like, uh, information. So distance, for example, here, we have a mathematical equation. What I did is just implement it, yeah, just implement it as a just simple math here, here, yeah. It's nothing special. I'm trying to get the, um, the distance between the point and then apply the scale. And then, yeah. So the written value is 9.113, blah, 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 blah. Right. So now we know how to create a class, yeah, how to create a particular information or value to that class and then how to append particular function which always follow to their own instance yeah also we know how to create a static function yeah so this is the i mean it's really um there's more information about the class but i'm just trying to you know um uh, give you guys um the most important, uh, important um, understanding or um, idea related to the class. So I think um, we are good to go. Just uh, revisit and then just type in, please. So now we, are, uh, we have a color information. So basically we are designing, so yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, in the, the code before in your static, um, yep. in vector zero and in vector one, my point was the same value. Uh, is there a reason why it's not my point one and my point two? Or okay, here, here you saw. Um, there's just two different values: vector zero, v zero, and v one. Yeah. yeah, and then that one is just indicating the types of the geometry that oh, we need to class. Yeah, okay. just type. Yeah, okay. just like that. 
x, y, z, this number. So we just explicitly mentioned the type. I think this is the beauty okay. of the TypeScript. Yeah, yeah. That's why we, we wanted to use the TypeScript. By the way. Thank you for asking the question, by the way. Um, so a uh, color, I mean, previously we learned the vector, right? You know what? Based on the vector, vector is absolutely most important thing for the designer. Yeah. So the second important thing, I guess, is the color because we are dealing with like um, um, some 3D geometry or 2D geometry which has uh, uh, can be reflected the light or we can define some color. Yeah. So with the vector and color, we can actually draw something on the screen. Not only screen, you can you know, migrate the information from digital world to, world to the physical world by the we take, yeah? So the color is important. So there's many ways to, to emphasize, but one thing I wanted to mention is like a false color, right? So as a computational designer, I have a several experience to you know, um, make some optimization for the building energy or lighting simulation. So a lot of the industry like uh, using this uh, simulating um, their own environment like by computational methodology. So the false color is uh, something like different types of representation of the data. Yeah, just like uh, this is also sort of data visualization, let's say. Yeah, so because to think about it, we have uh, some gradient like uh, uh, let's say zero, zero, zero black, right? Two, five, two, five, two, five. Let's say we can normalize like a zero, 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 or 1.1.1, .1 right? So in between, we can project, we can represent any other information in that scale, right? We call this normalization. So inside of this, the, 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 let's say, a space, zero to one. So in the first, using the first color, we have a more like a visual, you know, uh, distinction between this uh, range, for example. So, um, I mean, there's a different types of color representation depends on the um, um, the area. So one of my friends you know, who work in the, the cosmetic in industry, they have their own sort of, I couldn't remember the, 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 uh, the, how they call the color, but the other day I had them to compute like a convert color RGB to that their uh, format. But I couldn't remember this, day. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> Anyhow, so here, um, we have um, a data structure to describe color, yeah. Um, so same as before, we have R, Z, B, A stands for alpha, right? So you guys design it, yeah? So um, I'm used to like a more um, not normalized value, like a, it's like a zero to two, five, five, right? And R, Z, B, and alpha, usually alpha, uh, we uh, use the normalized value, okay? So um, this is the minimum requirement because we're gonna create a class, right? Class has need their own information. So we declare the, the sort of, uh, we book the room in the hotel, for example, right? And then we ask some information, yeah? And then we find them, yeah? This is a minimum, a requirement for the class because the constructor is always required to create a new you know, class. And then other than that, they are sort of, let's say, custom function here, right? So normalized, this is function, which, is, which just belongs to instance, correct. And we have a data function called to hex, meaning that we can convert uh, RGB value to the hex value that we already learned yesterday, right? And then also we have the other sort of function, looks a little bit complicated, but as I said, if the function is complicated, just looking at the two plates, one place, what is the input values? What is the return value? That's it, yeah? So we just encapsulate the complexity inside of this function, right? And then the beauty of this, this way is uh, also we can reuse because we modulize the individual small logics, right? Maybe you can, on top of it, you can create the most complex logic that actually cook the small logic, correct? So in this way, you guys can have like a, um, actually, you know, can make more work within more, uh, in, in less time, because we know we have a lot of like tools, a lot of library, let's say. So we can just simply assemble or disassemble based on the project or research, right? So here, 
What it does is uh, we have IGB information because we ask the user to give the, uh, the, the IGB value to create the, the class, which is a requirement, right? And then we have a multiple function to convert this data to the hex value or hue saturation value, HSV, correct, right? So all, um, at the end of the, uh, this one, it has a return value here, just like this. And then two hex has a return value here. Itself is in return value because it's uh, just function, yeah. And then normalize this is also return value. Okay, but, but one thing I can tell you, maybe I'm, I'm just a little bit hesitating in my mind, but you know what? I have a question. So, do you think if I execute this uh, um, um, function, yeah, is it? really tweak the change the information or not this is a really important question actually yeah to be to me it's self-explanatory but i'm just trying to ask you guys like uh, make us some brainstorming here so we have this and red is uh, the, uh, i'm sorry red and green and b so we simply use it in order to normalize yeah zero to one and then we simply return it meaning that the function actually never uh, change the value inside of the class. So this is a really important thing because we're gonna make some agent-based system. So each agent talks each other, but sometimes they, they actually can change their own information. We need to create a rule, but on the other hand, maybe what if other agent can tweak the information, the, uh, the, the other agent, in this case, the, the logic is become crazy. So we need to make a very strict rule, yeah? I mean, I mean as your uh, experience is getting increased, you guys get like a try and error experience. So maybe uh, for the instance class, I suggest to you guys, for example, okay, we gonna create the a function that never tweak the information inside of the class. If you really want to tweak the, uh, the, informa uh, the, the information in that class, then we can use the static static function, for example. I mean, this is sort of a rule. There's no like a uh, uh, mandatory, um, um, like a uh, objection, I guess. But anyhow, so if I do like this, okay, actually I can give you the other code here for the brain, brain storming purpose. So let's say I'm going to copy like that here. So this, actually, this function actually just use our own value, but we are not going to change, just make some output, yeah? And then we directly return the value. But in this case, I divide the number by 2555, meaning that because this is basically this one, the same, same operation, same operation, yeah. So we calculate it. And then we overwrite this information to that one. So after this line, the R value is already romanized. Yeah. So we simply return it. So once you execute this line, we basically tweak this information. Yeah. However, if you execute this line, yeah. Oh, oh, I think this is wrong. Yeah. I think that this is the correct one. Yeah. <laughs> now I just, I just found it. Yeah. <laughs> because equal sign is uh, assign something. So in this case, we never tweak this information. Yeah, I think this is good to go. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow, um, I create the, uh, I think I need to get rid of this uh, function because they have the same name, which is no good. I save it. So, you know, I, I, I create the a color uh, object out of this color class, right? The value is the, the, the lab value is the maximum. So as a hex value, it's like that. So you can make a double check. Yeah, this is lab color, right? And then, uh, my, okay. so you can go to this website. 
in order to see what the result here. Uh, yeah, here. So, um, 0, 1, 1, right? Hue, saturation value, hue, saturation value, 0, 1, 1. Yeah. Uh, 0, 1, 1. Yeah, it's the maximum value because this is normalized here, right? So they are basically same color but different representation. CMYK, HSV, HSL, LAD. Yeah, this is LAD color. So cosmetic area, they use the lab types of representation of color. Yeah, anyhow. So um, yeah, play with this information and functions and then create your own color class. Yeah. And then we can jump to points. Getting interesting, yeah. So this is a, still we are dealing with the point. I mean, can you tell me anyone, you know, what is the difference between um, uh, the difference between point and vector? Yeah. I mean, it depends. I think it depends. But um, in this case, the vector is just contain the, the, the essential information um, to describe something in the spatial uh, context. And then the point here, the point is going to occupy their own vector and color. Right? So for example, we have a point here, right? Yeah? And the point has a vector and a color object yeah? that we already declared. In the, in the previous um, exercise. So uh, let me zoom out a little bit. Yeah. A little bit more. Okay. So this is the vector class that we already uh, visit. And then this is the color. I just copy paste from the, uh, from the uh, previous exercise. Yeah. So this is just two code. The reality is it, and then I click create a new new class called point. Yeah, and then as a value, it has a vector back as a back, and then color value as a color. Yeah, and then the initial value is the same as vector because this is a you know, required information for the creating um, a point, right? Okay, so I inside of the uh, the constructor. I create a new vector and then save this information inside of the back um, variable, which belongs to point class. Correct. And we have a distance to a function, which is basically cooking the, the low level API, let's say. It's not low level, yeah? but what I'm saying is right now is uh, because we have two different class, yeah? color and vector. And then I'm going to create a point class. Right, and then I try to take advantage of two existing class, just like a, you know, assembled two class inside of the point, right? So this is a distance two function, set color function, get hex, hex um, function inside of this point, yeah. So let, let us look at the, the example, I guess, yeah. So um, we have a point, point, simply gives two number, a three number, and then all complexity is resolved inside of the class. We don't need to worry about it. And we have a P0. I mean, I try to mimic the API in Rhino. Yeah, Rhino has the same function distance too. Yeah, so one point has their instance function, and then the require, the sort of uh, the parameter is at the other point in order to get the distance between them. Correct. So this is actually the, the, if you do some line of Python or line of C sharp, there should be a, a exactly same function like this. Anyhow, so I put the two points and then measure the distance. And then also I will try to change the color using set color. So what it does is a, there's a RGBA parameter that we need to um, input. I mean, this is required. So this number, is a try to access this. This means this same context, the inside of the object, and then color. This indicate this value, right? Now we know, you know, 
the color value has the other R, Z, B, right? It's like a 2D structure, right? So here, let me, let me take a look at the uh, color, the color class here. It has an R, Z, B, A. I'm just trying to like, a, um, like a traverse the children's parents using the dot notation, right? So here, um, I basically directly, directly overwrite the color value. Yeah. So now you can see what is the result here. Okay, so um, actually, you know what? The default value, you can see that what is the default value here. Yeah, default value is a R, Z, B, meaning that this point is going to be uh, represented as a green color, right? But I'm just apply this number and it's going to be upside down, like F, F, R, 0, 0 for green. For the blue, we have FF, yeah. So we basically encapsulate the complexity based on different class, yeah. We basically, let's say, um, isolate the problem, yeah. I think this is really important, modulize the, 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 the functions, let's say. Okay, we can jump to other um, example. We have a line here. So actually, what I did is I import, directly import uh, the previous exercise because I don't know, the code pen supported it. So I just import it. So I just directly use the point that we just made, yeah. And then because you, we know you can define line by two points, right? So this is the point. And then we directly the override, not override, like a like a de declare a point. And then we have a like a get midpoint function. I just implement it. So now for the uh, um, use case, um, I created two points. Yeah. So this is just like independent points. Yeah. And then here is a line because the line needed two points. Yeah. And then I just uh, create the uh, object out of this line class. And then, actually, we can uh, re react it. Come on, we are busy. Okay, let me open the developer panel. Yeah, so I, uh, okay, this is the, I think that this is the line 39, this one, yeah. Okay, no, 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 this one, this one, I guess, yeah. So we have a points here, yeah. And the point, uh, oh, what is this? Okay, sorry, hey, line, yeah, line, this is a line. So the line contains two points here, yeah, because the class has a two points here, right? And then individual point has a color here, yeah, RGBA, it has a vector, X, Y, Z, right? And then the other point is a one, zero, two, five, five as a color value, and then vector five, five, five. So we have the line object, but basically we can try to inspect what is this. It, it turns out the line has two points, yeah? That we already declared in the previous uh, the exercise, like a point. Do you, do you guys can, can see my point, right? How we you know, um, organized um, the class and we can take advantage of you know, uh, create our own design algorithm or um, the object or class. So anyhow, and then at the, at the uh, as I said, I implement like a get midpoint function here, right? So actually this point, is the middle point of this line. We have, let's say we have a two point. Where is middle point? Come on, this is the middle point, right? So we have a zero, zero, zero and five, five, five and the middle point is going to be like that. 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, does it make sense? Right? Come on. <laughs> Maybe we can make a little more like, like this. Yeah, so. Is it execute or not? 
No, not yet. Mom, we are busy. It's it. Refresh it. So this is the middle point. What? Where are you? Color. Oh, yeah, here. There you go. Point. Vector. This is actually the uh, represent the midpoint of this line. Yeah. So let me jump. Uh, we have uh, we are rich polyline here. So I guess you guys are smart, you know, smart to predict how we build polygon, polyline class because we learn, we know how to you know assemble or disassemble the individual blocks. You know. So here we have a polyline, and then we have point list inside of polyline class. Yeah. And then maybe as an input parameter, we can you know reuse polyline for the polygon, you know, by just using take advantage of uh, you know the is open Boolean variable. If it's open, we are not close the polyline. However, if it is a clo closed, uh, is open is true, then we try to you know close, force to close the polyline, then it becomes polygon. Does it make sense, right? So I put the add. Um, sort of um, um, the internet function, right? And then to string and get length. Yeah, this is the function. Just to think about like uh, what is input and what is the output. There's no return value here. However, it's, it has a return, right? So now I create the just empty polyline because, oh, this is my bad, sorry. This is good, good, good. I mean, there's no error. But as I said, it's this way is always, always best. So I just give it the, the default value here. So this is good to go. And then the input value, in order to execute this function, the input value is point, right? So that's why I actually make the point here as a new, key, with new keyword, right? So I'm keep adding four points, yeah? And then I, um, using the, two, uh, the execute to string and then get length function which is belongs to that object, particular object here, not the class. Yeah, because this is not an aesthetic function. Anyhow, what is the result here? Okay, so if you use the two string here, two string, yeah, it returns um, the, the, the length of the points that polyline has. Makes sense, right? That's we, 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 we append the four points. So that's why we are see uh, the four, right? And then this is actually total length of the, the points. Yeah, very simple because, you know, you, out of this uh, point, we can make some dis uh, the, the, the distance. Like, um, okay, so let me try to take this, this one a little bit. Okay, so here's the magic, not magic, <laughs> but we have a loop, right? However, we are not going to loop through all the way to the end. Just write one, one before the end because we're gonna try to um, measure this, the, the correct, uh, current uh, ID with the plus one, yeah? So can you see my uh, screen? Like, uh, can you see my hand? So we have a one point, two point, three point, four point. So this point compare this one, and then this point compare this one, and then this com point compare with this point so that we can loop through all the points, so that we can just sum them and then return the, 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 the value so that we can call it total distance, correct. Um, let me jump and then polygon here. To be honest, <laughs> I'm a little busy. I couldn't sleep, yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm leave this um, exercise for you, uh, the homework for you guys, okay? So please copy this copy card, uh, please copy this card to your um, uh, code pen and then try to make a polygon, you, you guys own custom polygon, which is just a simple mathematical object. The reason I'm emphasize this one is uh, it has nothing to do with platform. It has nothing to do with the WebGL, OpenGL, or 3JS, or Canvas, or Rhino, or, or, or processing. 
Yeah, you can actually implement this the lines of code to whatever platform as long as you can script because this is a simple mathematical object, right? You can implement it this onto I don't know Python or MATLAB or uh, processing or Rhino Python or Rhino C sharp. Yeah. So this is homework, and then we we reach the other point and line and area which is for visualization, yeah? So I append a canvas, yeah, which is not special. And then there's a something one like a special independent function that draw a point out of two number and color radius, including radius, yeah. So you can, you can visit this uh, uh, web API site to see more information about um, the canvas API. And then I declare the other class called canvas point. And the canvas point actually contain this P that we declared before, right? Let's say I call this, it's just pure mathematical object. It has, an, it has no dependency, it has nothing. It only contain some numbers to, to, the, to, to represent point or line or area, yeah? And then I create the, the other variable inside of a canvas point, which has something to do with the render side. So I'm trying to separate the concern, like an algorithm part and then rendering part, which is a good hobby, actually. So uh, nothing special, same thing, but we have a render function that actually call this independent, um, you know, the, the draw, draw uh, function, draw function, and then, Internally, the, the um, render function, they give the right information to draw something on the screen using Canvas API, right? So for example, just take a look at the, um, the, the implementation. I mean, let's say example exercise. So I create a new um, um, Canvas point here, right? And then 10, minus 15, zero. Probably, I guess, um, the center is here. So along the X and Y and Z, we have no Z here. But you know, as a mathematic uh, concept, we have a more dimension uh, beyond three. Anyhow, so I put the, the radius here and then color R, Z, B, because now we, we already know the point has a color, color class, right? So it's like a, like a you know, hierarchy, okay? So uh, I just uh, print them so that we are able to see this uh, object here. Yeah, object has a point, point has a color, distance to function, get hex function, right? It has a radius and the render function, yeah, as, as the, we can see in the print. And then we can simply, you know, trigger the render function, which belongs to this object, yeah? So that we can see this red, uh, mm, let's say the red color uh, on the screen. How easy, right? I mean, once you have a right data structure and right algorithm, and then the, you, the use of the, uh, the, the object or class is uh, very optimized. So you can focus um, your own purpose because we, we already, already reserve some level of complexity on the, on the object side, yeah? So here, what I'm trying to do is uh, make some little crazy, not crazy, make a little more fancy things using for group. Yeah. So here, here, um, I I have a for loop which run around uh, around fifty, right? And then in the, while while looping, I offset the x value. Yeah. And then for the y value, I using the sine function to make some like, you know, oscillation curve here. So in terms of the use of this point, this will be really straightforward, right? Because we simply append the how to render. You know what? Tomorrow we're gonna learn a little bit about um, the 3JS, which is the 3D graphics WebGL uh, high level wrapper you can actually directly use this class. Just simply change the render, yeah? Then we can bring all the, the algorithm that we build already, yeah? 
So this is nothing special. So even you can do like that. Just create it. Oh, sorry. Just create, no color change. We're gonna use all the default value. Yeah, default value is like that. Yeah. Or we can play with a little bit, like uh, we can scale it a little bit along the y axis. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I access the density, I guess. Huh. Maybe we can do not this one, maybe this one. Yeah, I mean, because we are already encapsulating all the information, so we can, what I'm trying to say is that focus based on the level of the complexity or level of your purpose, because we already resolved the geometry or color level, which is like a very fundamental. And then on top of it, we can actually pull our design algorithm or logic, yeah, and then encapsulate that in, in that level. Uh, okay, we have a line here, so nothing special. Same as before, we have a vector. Actually, I, I just create a vector here. Yeah, I, I, I guess I didn't import anything okay, here. So we just create a very minimum vector here, x, y, z, and the one static um, function, yeah. And then we have a line, right? Very simple, line has a two vector, yeah, in this case. And then we have the, some um, line of course to declare the canvas to append to the div. And this is a draw function, which the input value is not like vector or whatever, just like an array or over array to declare the line, right? And also it has like the other parameter to, to draw because we're dealing with the, the, um, the renderer right now. Now we are reached the canvas line which is specialized to render by canvas, right? So we have a uh, vectors and line, yeah, it's closed. And then line width and line dash. Actually, where are you here? Oh yeah, here, yeah. So, you know, now you know, uh, we can actually mimic the push action in the list, yeah? And then we have a render, we have a get line function here. So this is the implementation, I mean, the, the, the um, object, how to create the object out of this class. So new keyword, no parameter here. So we create the, the object and then we need to put the two number, which is stands for x, y, yeah? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? And then we can simply execute, trigger the render function, yeah? It should be, yeah, here, yeah? And this is the term, yeah, I mean, this is very simple, right? Very straightforward, right? And then, if, if, uh, let me uncomment here. Yeah, so we get the, this object. It has uh, you know, this function and variable. Yeah, we can drill down, all the way down and up, which is really good. And also, if you trigger the get line function here, yeah, so actually, we can open the, um, the developer console here. So we have a three lines, right? Because this function is triggered um, to um, you know, to drive the, 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 basically generate the data about the line, yeah? And then the last one is we basically string file, yeah? We are familiar with that, right? we know this function, yeah. Hello. Come on, I save it. Let me refresh it. So now we are we have this information, right? Yeah. Let me copy this file, and I'm going to open the JSON link here. Just wanted to see whether it works or not, right? Control V and then validate. Yeah, this is validate JSON file. Yeah, meaning that we can use this data to the visualizing different platform or we can save this one as a sub -side. I mean, there's a lot of possibility because there's data, yeah? So now we you know, know uh, how to create the line class, particularly for the rendered by um, canvas. And then we can uh, extract the information uh, from the line. This is the example. And the area here, Yeah, um, as we said, this is the homework. <laughs> yeah, 
So this is nothing special. I'll just give you um, basic um, sort of um, function that we call to describe class, like a constructor and a render. So all freedom is here. So try to make a, your own sort of canvas area um, class. Yeah, this is the challenge, which is good. That you, we are here, right? And then um, the JSON example. This is actually has nothing to do with the class, but as I said, the JSON object is you can represent the class itself as a JSON because JSON means uh, JavaScript object notation things. So as a the bonus here, um, let's see. This is the the lines of code to create the canvas and append the canvas to div. And then actually this is, we don't need this one. Yeah. Uh, maybe we need, <laughs> because make some difference, okay. Sorry, could you explain the canvas rendering to the context again? Sorry, projection? Uh, no, could you explain the canvas rendering to the object thing again? A uh, line 25. Lighting? I, I I didn't get it. Can you? Uh, could you explain line twenty five the canvas rendering context two D again? Thank you. This one, yeah. Oh, uh, you you wanted to uh okay so, um, yeah. I mean this is a sort of a syntax that we need to follow. Okay, so um we use HTML. I mean because we are using browser, so HTML has the special sort of um canvas, um class basically somebody built it so this is sort of a fashion so we need to create the canvas by asking document because it has a function so we, we can predict there's no, no new keyword meaning that this is sort of a static function right and then this is the input value there's a designate value so if you insert like div the return value is a div what it does is this is div all the, all the, uh, like a, let's say, um, um, like a scale-like area is defined by div. Div, div. This is something about like a HTML or web design thing. So I'm not, you know, going to talk about deeply. But we have a canvas, right? Canvas is also independent sort of um, object that we are that we can take advantage of the HTML, you know, structure, the canvas, and then. The canvas has a function, which is sort of an instance, instance function. Uh, I, I guess, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe, yeah, anyhow. So, because there's some deviation, so anyhow. So we use the get context function that needs some context. Actually, we can Google it, yeah. This is a little bit chance to Google it. So here, you know, blah, 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 and then the syntax here, and then, wow, this is a parameter that we need to understand. Like the 2D, yeah, if you input uh, the 2D as an input value, and then it's gonna return values, canvas and rendering to the context. If you do WebGL, it return the WebGL uh, GLSL EL 2.0, yeah. If you, if you uh, uh, use the WebGL 2, it gives us like uh, the WebGL context, which can, uh, consume the uh, OpenGL ES, which is like a shader language 3.0, okay? This is the just designate one because somebody built it. Yeah, because we just want to take advantage of it. Just we just we built already, we, we built like pull, um, uh, point, vector, color, and then we declare some parameter, right? Because we are built, we, want, we did 100% customization, but somebody built it, and then this is the parameter that we can, uh, uh, we, we can use it. So, um, so we expect, this is the canvas. So I just explicitly mentioned the type, yeah? So actually you don't need to do this because the, the return value is going to be saved inside of the CTX here. And now the CTX stands for context, 2D rendering context, has this, 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 these are variable, and these are kind of function. Yeah, so we simply take, uh, just uh, execute the, the individual inbuilt function from this context so that we are able to draw something on the screen because this is all the canvas does. I mean, the, sorry, the, the, 
HTML 2D canvas context. Yeah, I think this is <laughs> correct term. Yeah. Because canvas actually have a 2D canvas with 3D WebGL things. Yeah. Anyhow. So is it right right answer to your question? Oh yeah, I got it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I created two um, sort of, um, let's say, function here. There are two different ways. Uh, as I said, like an old, old way, and then uh, the oral function. I use the oral function here. And then uh, this is the sort of, uh, um, let's say, uh, we will visit, we will revisit later, anyhow. So, anyhow, so we import all the world, yeah, I mean, the, the GeoJSON describing all the continents on the globe, and then we string file and then parse it. So, GeoJSON, we eventually we, we, we expect the GeoJSON here, yeah. So, let me visit the console here. So, this is the GeoJSON file, right. It's just an array which has a 257, right? So each, each uh, item inside of the array, they are dictionary, let's say dictionary with JSON, and then it has a geometry, polygon. Oh, this is something familiar with, right? So polygon have, need to have multiple number of array to, to, to declare the position. Yeah, because yesterday we learned, right? So. Um, there's a two, two types of a polygon, as I said, polygon or multiple polygon, yeah? So, uh, actually, let me visit the um, okay, geo JSON. So this is a data structure, and uh, we have multipoint or multipolygon like this, or geometric collection, yeah. So multi-polygon and polygon, yeah? So I'm just figuring out what is, what, who are you, right, basically. So, and then I trigger these two draw function that I already built it, and then I'm just simply using simple for loop, and then just use simple like a canvas draw function that we already, you know, learned in the previous, um, I mean, yesterday, I guess, yeah? so that we are able to draw the world map out of the GeoJSON. Okay, so this is just one example to draw something. And then I think maybe this is a really good challenge to create a class that consumes the GeoJSON. And then we have uh, the individual function, then we're gonna encapsulate this individual function based on their purpose inside of the class, right? And then what it does is just whatever GeoJSON is smartly dealing with and then figure it out what kind of renderer we need to use. For example, for the point in the, poly, uh, in the, in the GeoJSON or polyline or multiple polyline. So we basically, the class is decompose the complexity and isolate the individual job. And on top of this level, uh, some, we can create some class that actually cook the low level or like a very small fragment of the function inside of that class. You guys can design this kind of things. I mean, just think about it. You know, some of you guys, is a, some director in your design team, you guys have like five teammates, yeah? So if you guys get like a new project, yeah, you, 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 your brain is working like how to, how to decompose or how to, you know, divide the works and then who, you know, prepare something or, I mean, I don't know. This is more of like a uh, like experience, right? So, I mean, the class has to give us all sort of freedom, this kind of freedom. So I think the most important thing is how we migrate, like interpolate or translate our design thinking process to that like um, the computational um, description, numeric description, let's say. Okay, or instruction. So I think this is all about, I really wanted to tell you, you guys today, actually. Um, so let us, we can see the, uh, some demo that I prepared for you. So first of all, um, this is some of my, like uh, sometimes my personal work or my interest. This is some, okay, the problem we want to solve, resolve with this one is that we have some rectangle 
and then the rectangle need to be, uh, uh, I mean, they sometimes they over, override each other, but we don't want to override. So they push each other a little bit, little bit. So we can customize the parameter, yeah, the, like an offset value or offset value, maybe less offset or big offset, or this is some, some iteration, how many, I guess, yeah. Do you know how can I create it? Nothing special. I already told everything to you guys. Yeah. I create a vector and color and then encapsulating the other class. And then I decompose like a rendering part and then an algorithm part. And then in the algorithm part, there's a multiple step during the iteration. Yeah. The first iteration, checking if they check and then where is you, uh, what is your vector and then compare. And then we can figure out the direction. And then I move a little bit and then checking again. Because I, because I move to other place, sometimes I can override, I mean, override other point. So I need to ask them, you need to go away. You know what I mean? Things like that. This kind of the thinking process, I mean, human being can think easily, but most important things are how we explicitly create the instruction for the computer using TypeScript, for example, here, right? So this is the other sort of circumstance, like we have like a black area that is like never moved. Yeah, and this is like an iteration in uh, optimization things. I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, if you have a better idea, you guys can create a, a way better strategy, I guess. This is something I just thought about at the time, yeah. And this is a other sort of uh, implementation because there are multiple ways to optimize the position of the rectangle. At the time I used the glass system. This, the previous one is the, 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 let's say the agent base. So, also, there's a, some like very, you know, light simulation. The light means like a very, you know, fast performance, the simulating things called the spring system. So, I mean, it looks complicated, yeah? But my understanding of the spring system is like, you know, there's some rule that we need to pursue, yeah? For example, the distance. Two points has a particular distance. So while they optimize, sometimes the distance is a little bit closer and then they try to trying to push each other, pull each other, based on the, 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 the previous calculation. So then we can make a like, they're trying to maintain the exact same value because they're trying to offset yeah, in order to make the dis same distance during the iteration. So this is the, the, the um, let's say, very, <laughs> um, um, you know, let's say, how can I say, just um, simple, um, Description of the spring system. Yeah. Anyhow, um, let me close it. Uh, so we can actually apply this sort of thought to the, um, the optimization things. I mean, you know, um, uh, a kangaroo, right? In, in, in rhino grasshopper. I have no idea, but probably they use the similar things. So we can actually, you know, can like drag. And then the screen system, they try to keep like compute. Basically, we play with the environment and then the individual geometry is like a compute based on the environment that we are tweaking right now, right? So we can, diff, uh, we can yeah, play with it a little bit. Also, so there's something. Yeah. It's nothing special, but what I'm saying is, uh, again, so this looks complicated, but how, how we, you know, decompose the individual, like a rendering part or algorithm part or update part or iterated part or, you know, the, the if statement part. Yeah. So we just think about in the, uh, in the concept of the class. Yeah. That we learned today. Okay. Uh -huh. And this is the other implementation. Uh, in the three-dimensional area. So, um, so we can tweak it and click it and drag it. They're trying to maintain based on the variable. I use the 3JS, which is also we can learn in the web browser. And then we can go quickly. And then this is also the graph system. Graph is really um, important um, data structure to capture the spatial information. So. You can use uh, whatever like a net, uh, network analysis using the graph. So in this case, I'm just making some playground. So if you click it, they actually try to find the closest point and then 
apply the other point within particular the, 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 the length. So that's why they push the, the exist um, point in that graph. See, like this. So, I mean, you can create your own sort of uh, algorithm here, or you can click and drag in. I mean, you know, the yellow means they, they have some problem. Yeah, yellow means. So that they're trying to compute based on the, the, the instruction that we already pre-built inside of the class. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can uh, play with the length and then dragging or click. Or, I don't know, yeah. Just using the class, just play with it. And then um, also we can mimic sort of uh, like a rigid body system. So here we have a like, gravity and then pull each other. There's just some weight and they're trying to like uh, working based on our instruction. So for example, I can click and drag in. Yeah. I mean, again, I use the class and then decompose and then create the algorithm step by step. And also in the JavaScript, we have really good library called Meta.js. So this is really great and super faster yeah, for the 2D collision things. So if you guys are interested in visit this site and there is documentation, there's a lot of like in you know, a useful function that you don't need to worry about it for the implementation. So um, there's really one example for this method here. Um, so we can just click it. We can keep populating some, just like a Patrice, you know, it's nothing special. I just uh, implement like a method JS, but just as a designer, we need to think, right? How we take advantage of um, what kind of parameter we can assign, we can uh, represent our design strategy in that physical engine, for example. Yeah, so I don't know, it's just for fun, maybe, yeah. And also we have the other block here, <laughs> this blocking. Just think about it, right? I'm, I'm actually, I'm praying right now. So this is the just very simple example, you know, how we, you know, dealing with the, the individual geometry as an agent and then give some environment. Yeah, it's a really simple one, just for the exercise. And then this is one of the, my just, uh, uh, when I have time, I'm trying to learn like a sort of like reinforcement learning. And then there's two things. One is optimization uh, to uh, make a win. And, but again, this is right now, I have not enough time to play with it. So, I mean, what you can do is that we can think about like a space, individual space is uh, like a each, each pixel. And then we, how we packing the, the geometry, um, the um, packing the, the, the geometry inside of the pixel. I mean, this is all about the Tetris, right? It's nothing special, but one day I'm gonna complete. But right now it's not that complete. Thanks. And also we have the other things like uh, here. This is actually one of my projects because one of my professors asked me when I was in Korea. So for example, we have a path route here, right? So individual is like a people try to evacuate and then they need to wait, yeah? And then other pixels go, uh, go, then other ones follow, and they have their own sort of um, the speed. And they also need to maintain the distance between them. Yeah, nothing special. Just I'm um, just think about the, the the logic and how we decompose, how we make an instruction to for that class of object. And here, um, what is this? Okay, let me click. Okay, so individual the agent, there's room around. They sometimes stick each other, it's nothing special. I mean, this is the void and uh, void simulation. There's a lot of uh, example or exercise out there. For the implementation side, again, we need to decompose, otherwise we couldn't deal with the complexity in each other, basically. So uh, we have uh, the other behavior. Uh, okay, let me see. They actually try to follow the, my, my mouse cursor, but when they collide each other and then they literally slap back a little bit, yeah. This is just something for fun for me. Um, 
again, we're dealing with the data, right? So this is the sort of uh, the linear regression that you can directly learn on the web browser, as I said, like use TensorFlow. So I used uh, some uh, data from the TensorFlow, I guess. I couldn't remember because I did it a long time ago. But the interesting thing is that you can actually populate your own data here. And then can you see the fitting line here? Yeah, so think about it. We have a graph, yeah? Individual graph has their own sort of linear regression to fit their graph. I'm just talking about the neural network, basically. So what I'm saying is that if, once you are uh, understanding or get familiar with the low level coding, and then how we, how we looking at the problem and the decompose and isolate the function and problem issues. I mean, this kind of the hobby is really important for the computation designer, I think. Just my thing, I don't know. Yeah. Just from my experience. So we have here, once you keep populating a point, we have also polynomial things, which is nothing special, which is keep training on the fly. My browser is getting heavy and heavy. Let me close something. Okay. Um, so the last one, we have a multiple, like a linear regression, for example. I just draw two points here, right? However, they have like four different models to fit to find the, the, the coefficient to describe the two points. What if I have one more point here, right? They try to fit in the, the given data to create the, a model that we, are, we can use in the future, for example. So what I'm saying is that we, we actually take advantage of this kind of, uh, they are overfitting right now. <laughs> can you see that? So anyhow, so we have multiple uh, polynomial, um, sort of a model to apply to, to, to see what is the best model. And then we can actually deploy the individual agents that they have their own, like uh, the degree of the polynomial. And they try to, I don't know, maybe compete or help each other to achieve some design problem that you already, you know, describe in the, in the function, for example. I mean, there's all freedom is there. So let me click here, it's a bit crazy. Okay, anyhow, so just close it. Um, the last one, so I use TensorFlow here. So for example, if I open my the corner here, so I can draw like circle here. Yeah, circle. So 1.9 plus probability that this is circle. What if I draw like a triangle here? Yeah, 1.9, try on. And 1.00 probability, like looks like cloud, and then a low text heart. Let me draw a heart here, for example. Oops. They, curve. they detect curve because I, I just double click into my mouse. Heart. Yeah. Huh, pretty good. <laughs> and oh, yeah. Yeah, single row. Uh, what else? Maybe rectangle here, right? Rectangle, yeah. So, I mean, I, I just simply use the, the TensorFlow, the machine learning things to training. I mean, but you know what, the most important thing is that what the network does, but you know, for the designer, I guess, is um, you know, how we prepare the data structure yeah, to train the network. So I use the, uh, that product for this. And then because you know, sometimes I, I can draw the rectangle really quickly. Sometimes I can draw rectangle really slowly like that, yeah? See, I mean, we can, we need to um, prepare this kind of, uh, how we capture this difference as a data. This is really important for the particular designer looking at the machine learning, okay? So this is the example things that you guys can, you know, and basically encourage you guys like how we you know, think about how we you know, migrate, uh, translate our design experience as a computation designer. Huh, there's a class concept, yeah? An object and function. Yeah, and then there's a tool. What should, we, what should we do, right? So trying to think about how I migrate my experience and my intuition as a code. Yeah, class is there, object is there. They actually really useful friends to you. Okay. Um, here, um, this is Python version of my vector, but don't believe it because I I I just saw it. I did very you know. So this is older version, I guess, but I mean, at least, you know, better than nothing, right? So um, this is the Kohle line JavaScript version. So meaning that we are familiar with the TypeScript a little bit, right? So we can think about just replace 
you know, function with class and then, I mean, but just as a brainstorming purpose, just you can see and try to read and then what is the data flow, you can predict it. And then you can think about, oh, this is a little bit wrong, you know, bad way, you can find a better way, right? Or we have a line here, as I said, the line has a starting point and end point, and then you know, two string functions. Oh, this is a useful function for check intersect line. Yeah, if you are interested, you can just copy it and use it. Um, and what is this? Yeah, vector. Yeah, this is like a simple vector. We have a three, oh, I think this is Java version. Java is provides us like a different, different types of syntax, but it gives us like a um, different constructors. Yeah, we can assign only two number or three number. We can scale the vector or multiply vector, add, add, add vector or length and normalize all the messages here. So you can see, maybe there should be some wrong. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if there is something wrong, please let me know. I will update it, okay? So we have uh, the C sharp version of the vector here. That's I, one, one of the things back to is important, yeah. I mean, it's all about, yeah. Like a, even the mesh or even the not circuits, we can define the vector and with weight, okay? Um, this is the vector JavaScript version. Yeah, this is the Python version, yeah. So Python is a depth rather than constructor, yeah. And then depth, depth inside of the class, right? a little bit similar fashion, but rather than using this, the Python use the self here, right? Self X means itself, yeah, self. So rather than using that, this, anyhow. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's it, pretty much about it. So let me uh, summarize uh, today's um, workshop and lecture series. So, I highly encourage you guys yeah, to dive in to understand what the class does and then what possibility, what opportunity will be there as a designer. So just rather than using, you know, I'm not saying which is bad, but rather than using just, um, you know, connect or disconnect graphical component or just make some procedural programming things, we can make them more fun or we can make a more complex like environment or design system using um, you know understanding I mean, the, 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 the concept of class and object that they compose problem yeah and then try once you understand and familiar with this environment and then it's time to you know migrate your intuition with experience yeah and then teach the machine it's not about the machine learning it's make it, I mean machine learning is basically think about it we have one equation, yeah, like sine cosine, yeah, and then we input value, give us input value, and then we, if, we expect the result value because the function does, we know what sine does, but you know, a little bit different way. We have an input and we have no output. I'm sorry, we have an input and we know the output. However, we have no idea what is the function. So basically, the other way of looking at Machine learning is like a, we have a input data and then result, and then what is the function basically? Try to try to you know find the function to minimize the fitting, yeah, the curve. So it's like a little bit different way. We explicitly make our function to create a class to deal with data basically, right? But however, if you have a lot of data, a lot of data and input, yeah, let's reverse engineer to figure out what the function actually creates this result because we have a result. Yeah, I mean, this is a little bit different way of looking at the, I mean, a lot of people know, knows, but um, anyhow, so this is, a, I, I'm a little excited because this is a little bit close to design, like a computational design rather than learning basic syntax or, you know, um, API things, which is boring because we are not interested in developing something. We are design, right? We have a lot of energy and eager to developing something for designing. So I think that this is the opportunity. Uh, so I highly encourage you not just use just like a copy paste, like a component or glass or pro or other, other people's code. Just let's, it's time to build our own algorithm, okay? You guys are designers. So I, I believe you guys, you know, for the lifelong time, we keep working. So, 
you know, my understanding of uh, the, the designing code is more about like a build my employee. I'm company actually. I'm company. I have a lot of employees. They actually, you know what? They never relax. They're always working, working. As long as I inject the power, electricity, they're always working. They're really faster, but they're a little bit dumb. So I need to give the explicit like uh, the instruction to them. So you know, we have, um, uh, we know the pros and cons, right? So it's time to take advantage of this ecosystem. Okay, that's it. Any question? I have a question. Yes, please. Um, so we've used a couple of tools now. Uh, are we going to learn about how these tools stitch together? So like if we did something in Grasshopper, how does that work with TypeScript? Or should I focus on learning like these individual tools and the syntax and stuff behind it? Yeah, I mean, to answer your question, uh, I. As, as the page stands for here, um, I'm, I have no plan to um, make some sort of um, connection between Grasshopper Python and JavaScript things, uh, and TypeScript. So let's say, let, let me quickly revisit the, um, here. So um, my understanding of computation is dealing with the data, all right, and then geometry. So these are, different types of the wrapping, I mean, understanding of how we're looking at the data, I guess, and then visualizing. So then um, also my, uh, one of the strengths is uh, because I work as a software engineer. So I have, I think, I guess, I have a little better than you guys in terms of making the pipeline or architecture as a product. So um, I, the, the, uh, the first um, the sort of aim of this workshop is the dealing with the post the data things. So I'm just I was thinking like what was the best you know approach. So I feel like you guys are already familiar with the Python or at least the Grasshopper things. So I just uh, um, um, you know talked about the Python and Grasshopper things. And also if you guys just coding, yeah, spend your own time on, on, on coding, it's a bit really boring. So I just make some. I give you guys like my plugin for the glass for to visualizing to you know, facilitating your energy, I guess. And then I uh, just wanted to teach you guys like, uh, because we are talking about the web here, right? It's on uh, uh, the web, on the, on the web. So um, I'm just sl slightly migrated the uh, coding exercise from the Python to the um, TypeScript, which hasn't, I mean TypeScript or yeah, let's say TypeScript has nothing to do with the Grasshopper pipeline or other things. I mean, this is like a discrete uh, workflow for now. But um, I have no plan uh, to, um, because we have limited time. And also we have uh, two more <laughs> uh, topics here. So I don't know, um, my answer is clear to you or not, but um, this is my uh, sort of um, my original plan. So yeah. no, that's really clear. Um, thank you. It's still very helpful. Um, I think starting with Python and then moving to TypeScript makes yeah. a lot of sense. So yeah, yeah I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. I think. I think. In, any other question? Uh, I think the link to all of them are the JSON file. So if we can create uh, in the different pipelines the the JSON file, we can use that in Grasshopper, Python, uh, TypeScript. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, you can you can think like that, but um, as I said, the JSON is sort of data structure. It doesn't yeah. contain the um, doesn't contain the actual code, the execution, like a function. Right. I think like that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, they, for the data exchange, I think the, the exchange wise, yeah, obviously, yeah, it's, it's correct. You can you can you know set up the pipeline and talk between two different platforms as a data and then inside of this, on each individual platform has their own process in different syntax, for sure. Yeah, yeah I don't know, I mean, I, I'm also still learning. I have LinkedIn experience. Maybe there's a lot of people out there who already have this you know, experience or already resolved this kind of topic previously. So maybe, yeah, can <laughs> looking for other people who, but I had an experience like, talking, um, communicating between Rhino 
and web browser to actually uh, uh, so using the socket uh, IO, socket, socket IO, yeah, I think so, socket IO. There is a way, yeah, but uh, we, you need to create your own like algorithm or class or definition in different language. Any other question? Yeah, I'm so exhausted. Uh, I'm crazy. You know, to be honest, I asked my director like a sick day today and then tomorrow again sick day. So I actually make a vacation for, for this uh, workshop. I'm a little bit, you know, to be honest, I'm a little bit um, relaxed. <laughs> but I'm extremely exciting because uh, I, um, you know, there's a lot of people here. Look at that. How many people are there? Yeah. I'm so excited. So, uh, um, anyhow, I'm very appreciated, um, you know, taking my workshop and then rising question. Yeah, thank you so much. And is it, uh, unless there's no question, I can close and then stop recording and then try to upload the video to YouTube and then you guys can repeat this video. Great, and um, see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ah.